We recently released the image of Saturn from the James Webb Space Telescope. So this image was actually not done as part of our public outreach images that we've released, for example, with Uranus and Neptune, but it's actually part of a science program where this particular image and subsequent images that they will be taking and doing a little bit deeper dive We'll be looking for some of the smaller moons in the Saturn system and also trying to identify new rings. But even with this just first exposure, one filter, you can already see how spectacular it is. Some of the things to point out about this particular image is Saturn itself is dark, especially when you think about the images that we have from the Hubble Space Telescope. And it's dark because at this particular wavelength is where methane gas is actually absorbing a lot of the sunlight that's falling onto the planet. And so that makes it actually appear a lot darker. But the rings are glowing. They're extremely bright. They're very distinct. You can even identify the A ring, the B ring. So you can see where some of the gaps between the rings are. Some of those gaps are even blended together. But you can also identify a couple of the moons, including Enceladus and Tethys, which is really amazing. It's Enceladus, which we've also studied in pretty extensive detail with the James Webb Space Telescope, showed that there's a huge plume of water coming from this moon and actually feeding the ring around Saturn. It's known as the E-ring. And it's a huge torus of water and ice and dust, which is not visible in the Saturn image, but that's just because we're at the wrong wavelength. And Celtus is really interesting to us because of this water plume and orbiters and other missions that have been in the vicinity of this particular moon. We know that it has a huge ocean underneath its surface. And this is one of the areas that we're really interested, especially in astrobiology, to search for a place that life may exist within our solar system. So the things that we can learn in our solar system with the James Webb Space Telescope is only enhancing our knowledge of the planets, their rings, their moons, in ways that we haven't been able to study them before. So we're really adding to the fundamental knowledge of our solar system with this observatory. But also we're going to be feeding that information into the next missions that we're sending to the outer solar system, a potential Uranus mission in the future, exploring Titan even further, Europa and Enceladus. All of these missions are being planned and, and starting to get organized. And the information that we're getting from the James Webb Space Telescope is only going to contribute to that science.